Hello again and thank you for joining me for another video. Last time we touched on charts and how we can add charts into dashboards and we loosely touched on Power BI Embedded. Now the Power BI components, we can take those from, from reports, add them into dashboards like we do with charts. However, last time we didn't go through it because there's more nuances to it, such as how do we actually build the report? Where do we store it? How do we bring it together? So in today's video, that's, that's the, the, the issue, the item that I'm going to address. So the first thing we need to do is, one, we need to make sure we've got data. So if we go back into our system that we had before, we can see that we have a number of assets. What we may want to do is do a report off the back of those assets. The second thing we want to do is make sure we've got somewhere to put those, put those assets or put those reports. So if you go to app.powerbi.com, you can see that in the address here. The first thing you're going to have to do is go through and set up a workspace. Workspaces are essentially logical containers that is going to store information like data sets, reports, and dashboards. And a very quick run through as to what those are. Your data set is going to be hooking onto multiple different sources, so where that information resides. Your reports are going to take that data set and visualize that information. And then your dashboard is going to take bits of information from multiple reports and put them into one place. And what we're looking to do really at this point is create a report and then expose that report via a dashboard and a model driven app. To create a workspace, it's easy enough. First thing you'll need is make, make sure that you've got a license. You're gonna need Power BI Pro to create, a, to create a workspace. Here you can see I've got a trial. You can get a trial for 60 days. To create a workspace, click on new workspace. Here you can add a name in, add a picture, and there's a few other bits and pieces that you can do with this as well. What might happen is as you're going through and building the workspace, you may be blocked. That can happen if there are policies and entry ID that stop you from creating groups because behind workspaces, there are sometimes groups that can be created. So if that does happen, speak to your Power BI administrator, raise a ticket with your IT support team. They can help you get around that. Even they may be able to help you build the workspace and then just give you access to it. Once you have your workspace up and running, there's not much to it. There's nothing in here yet, so we need to go away and create it. So rather than spending hours building a report, Let's do it using AI. So I'm going to go into my app and here I can see my assets. Here we have our view and on our view, if I quickly change this chart out. You can see we've got some information such as the name of the asset, the, the type of asset and then when it's created, but we might want to add some more columns. When we do create a report using the AI elements, so here you can see visualize this view, it will just take the data from the view. It won't look at the underlying table. So if I go to edit columns, I'm going to add a few more columns in. So maybe um, when when the record was created, potentially the location of that record, and potentially who created it. Once we're back with that, I can apply it. And here we go, we've got a bit more information. So record created on. Okay, that's that one's a bit relevant. So we can go through, clear up, clear up our tables. So there we go. But we've got we've got some information that we can now use and play around with. To get started with actually building the report out, click visualize this view. It's going to take a moment. It's going to analyze the data in that, in that view. And again, this varies based on the amount of data that sits in the view, the amount of columns that are visible in that view. But generally speaking, it is, it is a little, little quicker. We are also in a sandbox environment. So again, we might not have sufficient resources. However, in production environments, it's a nice quick process. We build out our data set, but we also, more importantly, going to build out a report that sits on the top of it. So we're just going to take a pause here. And in a few seconds, we should be back and have our report up and running. Brilliant. So now our report is up and running and we can see it's gone through and it's tried to evaluate some of the information available. So here we've got counter assets by type. Again, we've got similar visualizations here. We've got some bits and pieces down at the bottom. What we can do is we can select additional columns on the right hand side. This is our data set and it'll go through and take that information and figure out right what's the best way of showing that showing those details now if i go through and save this what that's going to do is going to ask us for a location and in my instance we're going to call this demo power bi report actually a better name may be asset management and in terms of our workspace i can put in my personal workspace however in my experience when it comes to creating dashboards you're not going to be able to select those dashboards that sit or those reports that sit in your workspace Say I'm going to go with a what I call a group workspace. So this one is Power Playground. If I click continue, that's going to go through and save that report for us. 
And there we go, we're good to go. So I'm going to close out of that for now. I'm going to Power BI. Now there's nothing in here at the moment. Give it a quick refresh. What we should see is our data model or our data set, also called a semantic model. We have a report in here as well. And what's nice about all of this, if I want to make a change, I can quickly click onto it. Give that a second to take over. I can go through and make copies of this, down download it if I wanted to make changes in Power BI Desktop. But more importantly, I can edit it whilst I'm in the browser. So if I want to change the layout of these visualizations, if I want to get it to show a little bit more information, if I want to go through and change the color scheme or, or whatever else, there's, there's a number of options available to me here to allow me to configure that report. Now, for now, I'm just going to close out of that because we don't need to play around with Power BI any longer. We now need to go through and create our dashboard. Inside of here, I can go to dashboards, click new, create a dashboard, and this time it's Power BI embedded. Now, key thing to note here, and it doesn't help with Microsoft names, Power BI embedded here is not the same as Power BI embedded in Azure. So one of the things that you'll find is that there is something called dedicated capacity, which is a licensed model for serving Power BI, usually to external users or to include into what I'd call um, first, first party apps or apps that you've developed yourself outside of the Power Platform. In our instance, this is just a mechanism of getting information from Power BI and embedding it to the process of adding content into another app through the Power Platform. It sounds more complex than it actually is, so let's actually jump into it and show you how it works. So here we have Power BI embedded. I can select that, the name, it's going to be asset information. We're going to want to Power BI report in this instance, but you can do a dashboard. This video isn't going through how to use Power BI, so I'll let you figure out how to do dashboards later. But for now, we're going to use a Power BI report. Here, we've got show reports in this environment only. We've got nothing in there at the moment. So if I expand that, I can choose a workspace. So we're going to choose a workspace. So in this instance, Power Playground, I can choose a report. So in this instance, Asset Management. Once that's all sorted, I can save that. And that's going to create a link between my Power BI report and then my uh, dashboard in the app. So now we need to make sure that that dashboard is visible to our model driven app. And the way we achieve this is by first publish all of your customizations, get that published, and then you can go into your app. Once that's once they have been published, if you go to apps, go back into your model driven app and you have two options here. And I usually choose option two because it separates some of the content. So let me jump into that and what that means. With our dashboards, this is actually allowing us to select multiple dashboards. So here, actually, when we start loading this into, um, into the actual playing of the app, we can come to here look at our dashboard and we can go through and select multiple dashboards based on what's available in the system. In my instance, I'm going to add a separate dashboard, look at a number of information or a bit of a chunk of information. We should see one in here called asset information under Power BI dashboards. I'll add that in and we'll give that a second, but I can go through, save it. Once I saved, publish it. And now that's going to be available for our users to select in the model driven app. To provide an example of what happens if you don't publish changes, here we have our asset information and you'll notice that we selected the Power BI dashboard. So why is it that on asset information, we only see this view? Adding to that, we don't have the option to select Power BI embedded. And that's because we haven't published all customizations. Once we edit or publish all customizations, you can now see that on asset information, our Power BI report has rendered and we have the option to select it from our dashboard dropdown. So that's it really, that's Power BI, how we can quickly create a report and then embed that into our model driven app. Hope you enjoyed this and as always, any comments, put them in the comments below.